Hi folks, I'm Kelly Coleffel and we're excited at Fivetran to be working with Microsoft on the latest with Microsoft Fabric and OneLake. Over the next few minutes, I'll take you through a live demo of creating end-to-end -end data movement pipelines with Fivetran from several sources and moving that data into OneLake. Fivetran stores your data in a structured format in OneLake. We write source data to Parquet files in the Fivetran pipeline, and then we use open source Delta Lake format to store those files in OneLake and make them immediately queryable and analytics ready. If you haven't checked out OneLake yet, it's a single unified logical data lake. You get it automatically with every Microsoft Fabric tenant, and it's designed to be the single place for all your analytics data. One Lake is going to give you a single data lake for the entire organization and a single copy of data for use with multiple analytics engines, really your choice. My data sources today are going to be Salesforce, SAP, and Google Analytics 4. All three of those can play a critical role when delivering data-driven analytics outcomes in Microsoft Fabric and One Lake. Before we jump into the demo, I want to set the stage. Fivetran accelerates an organization's Microsoft Fabric and OneLake adoption with fast, reliable, and secure data movement, regardless of the source type or source scale. At the same time, Fivetran is providing robust security, privacy, and data governance from all categories of data sources to OneLake. Think databases, apps, file systems, and event systems. That helps deliver Microsoft Fabric and data analytics workloads, everything from data warehousing to data engineering, data lakes, and converged analytics across industry segments and use cases. What you'll see today is pure SaaS, fully automated, fully managed, and everything is out of the box, ready to go with zero code and zero maintenance. And as I'll show you, Fivetran is exceptionally fast to set up and configure. Let's get some data flowing into one lake. I want to show you first the Fivetran One Lake destination setup page. We do support other Azure destinations as well, uh, Synapse, Azure Databricks, ADLS, and Azure SQL. You've got a step-by-step -step setup guide in the right gray navigation. The five key steps you need for setting up One Lake is you register Fivetran and add a service principle within AD. For that Fivetran service principle, you create a client secret. Then you jump into Microsoft Fabric, create a workspace in Synapse Data Engineering, add a Fivetran service principle to the workspace, and then create a new lake house. We're going to run for this one lake destination. We're going to run it in Azure US East 2, but Fivetran also supports a range of Azure regions around the world. Let's set up Salesforce to one lake first. It's definitely one of our most popular connectors. We've got over 400 sources. You see the number there, 442. That is growing by the day. And when you think about sources for Fivetran, they cover databases, files, event systems, and like Salesforce applications. It could be Workday, Oracle Fusion Cloud applications, maybe ServiceNow, Sage, ADP, Coupa, you name it. We've got those and hundreds of others. In fact, if you don't see a source in our list, I'd encourage you to submit that application to our Light Connector program for review. So for every source setup, similar to what you saw with OneLake, we've got a step-by-step -step guide in the right navigation. Very easy to follow, very simple. For Salesforce, I determine my schema name, and Fivetran will in turn automatically create that schema and the associated data set in one lake and manage any and all schema drift for me along the way. I'm going to go ahead and authorize that connection. Now that Fivetran is authenticated to Salesforce, uh, Fivetran will run the final tests. Our Salesforce connector is optimized to use the fewest API calls possible. We manage the rate limits, and in practice, customers find Fivetran is not a significant API consumer. So now what Fivetran is going to do is go out and fetch the schema, the tables, the columns, that uh, all the data that I have available in this Salesforce instance. I've got over a thousand tables here in this. I'm in the Salesforce developer instance, by the way. And I'm going to select a few tables here. I could take that entire data set, but if I've got specific requirements around uh, a few schemas, a few tables, a few columns, hundreds of those, or even all thousand, I can either take them all, I can block what I want to block, and even at the column level within a table, I could block individual columns. What's interesting too, if I've got data anonymization or PII requirements at a column level, I can hash at the column level and ensure that my source system PII is not passed over to my analytics platform in one lake. Fivetran is going to do a historical sync of that Salesforce data and also sets us up for incremental syncs and CDC automatically. Uh, for today, I'm going to allow all changes. Uh, any new schemas, tables, and columns will flow into my data set. 
And from there, that's it. Let's start that initial sync. So I want to spend a moment on this connector and just take you through some of the options that you have and what Fivetran's doing. If you look up at the top navigation, you can see exactly what's going on in the logs. I've got access to the schema. You can see those four tables that we're currently moving over on that initial sync into one lake. My usage will show up after seven days, and I can start getting an idea from a consumption standpoint about what my change volume is for this Salesforce connector. Again, Fivetran is going to set you up for incremental sync. I default to six hours. I can go up to 24, go down to a minute on pretty much every single connector that we have. I've got that ability to determine when I want to go back and pick up those changes. Fivetran uses your sync duration to determine if data is delayed and you have a lot of optionality behind what delay threshold you want to set there. I've got this one set at standard. Going back to the logs, looks like our sync has ended and if I hit the status page real quick and select the one hour, I'm going to hover over that green bar and it looks like we're uh, right about 40, 45 seconds or so for this initial sync. Remember, Accelerate Salesforce to One Lake was our schema name. Let's check it out and browse One Lake now. If I come into my Data Lake folder there, yep, I see it, Accelerate Salesforce One Lake. There is my account table, lead table, opportunity, and opportunity line item. Those were the four tables that we selected in Fivetran to move over. Remember, what makes Fivetran and One Lake so nice together is we're going to store that data in a structured format in One Lake. We write it to Parquet files in the Fivetran pipeline, then we use Delta Lake format to store those files in One Lake. And here, let's go ahead and load a folder, that account folder, to a new table. We're going to want to do a little bit of querying later on, maybe create a Power BI data set out of that. Uh, One Lake's got some great integrations in terms of what's available, such as Power BI that's integrated right into uh, the platform. Here, I'm going to do a quick data preview on that account table. So let's load that up and take a look at some of the columns that we've got organized, understandable, normalized data sets in One Lake. That's what you want. You want data that is ready to use. It's available. By the way, there is that hashed column, uh, that account number column that we hashed earlier on, and you can see that persisted over. No PII exposed in the One Lake platform at all. That stays in your source platform. One Lake makes it really easy to find, explore, use any and all of the fabric data items uh, that you have across your organization. So here we are going to create a new Power BI data set. I want to do some exploration on that Salesforce account table. Really simple to drag and drop different dimensions, different columns, different measures over onto the palette. And I am a big fan of the uh, kind of the big number chart or just keeping it really simple. That's what I like is uh, let's just make that 17.14 very evident exactly what it is. That's our sum of annual revenue. That's available in that table, that account table out of the gate. I've got another one there, which is uh, all employees. So that's how easy it is to interact with the data in one lake. That is data that, again, organized, understandable that Fivetran persisted over very quickly, very simply. I'm going to go ahead and save this report. I may want to come back to it a little bit later on. Really nice integration, Power BI and One Lake. And remember, what makes all of this possible with Fivetran and One Lake working together is the fact that we're leveraging the Delta Lake open table format that gives you analytics ready data right out of the gate. Fivetran has multiple options to move SAP ERP data, whether it's ECC or S4 HANA, starting with Fivetran LDP, which can be deployed anywhere, on-prem behind your firewall, in a private cloud, or in an Azure private tenant. LDP uses an agent-based approach to provide filtering and compression and achieve exceptionally fast SAP data movement to one lake with continuous sync. Then you have a host of Fivetran SAP options as well. Fivetran HVA connectors use a hybrid approach with Fivetran SaaS, 
communicates with a local agent or listener on the SAP source. Again, high volume, low latency for large SAP environments. We've also rolled out a new option recently, which is a 5Trans SaaS fully managed connector that communicates with SAP through the NetWeaver API and an SAP transport for both initial syncs and incremental CDC. That connector supports one minute polling, also works with SAP Rise and supports any SAP license type. That's what we're going to set up today for moving SAP ERP data to OneLake. SAP does present a unique set of challenges. It's behind an application layer. It's in a data model that has over 100,000 tables. It's coded fields and tables. It's no change data markers. A lot of different challenges there. We're going to configure, though, this SAP ERP on HANA connector, much the same as we did with Salesforce, except I do have to provide some additional credentials. Documentation, as always, everything is well documented in that right gray nav and I can add my own destination schema prefix. We'll keep it similar to how we did the Salesforce uh, schema earlier. We'll go accelerate SAP HANA One Lake Fabric Now. This connector is a pure SaaS deployment. It's fully managed, fully automated. It is about as simple as you can get to extract data out of SAP and move it into OneLake. Since we're using the SAP NetWeaver application for data extraction, you'll install the Fivetran SAP Transport that provides an RFC connection to SAP NetWeaver. It's a complete CDC framework. It's managed by Fivetran. You have a number of connection options as well, everything from SSH to reverse SSH to VPN. And you, in this case, we're going to configure uh, SSH connections. So I provide the host uh, identifier as well as the SSH port and SSH user. And that's really it. I mean, that's as simple as it is to connect up SAP ERP data with HANA as the underlying database to OneLake. Just like with the Salesforce connector, Fivetran is going to run through a series of connection tests. Here we're going to confirm the SSH handshake. And after that, Fivetran is going to finish off the connection test to SAP ERP on HANA. All those tests have passed. We love that green light. And based on that authentication, I've got access to any of the SAP tables that I'm authorized for. It's over 100,000 tables in SAP. I'm going to pick a few out here. Not all those tables are used for analytics, but uh, we'll pick a few of them here. MAKT, Mara, and maybe Marv. And let's see if we've got those out there in this HANA instance. We should, and we do. Let's uh, pick those three tables. I could add more. I can block any of the SAP tables that I want or add new ones in later on. So let's go ahead and start that initial sync. That's about as simple as it gets. Uh, sync shouldn't take long. It's a relatively small data set. Check out the logs here. I've got the schema available. I can add to that. I can take away whatever I want to do. You can see the columns there under the MAKT table. Same thing for Mara and Marv. Take a look at the setup page here for the SAP HANA connector. And my sync frequency, I can go as high as 24 hours. I can go all the way down to a minute. I'm going to keep it at six hours for right now. And let's do a check on our logs. Let's see if we're done. Yeah, so the sync has ended. Uh, that was pretty quick. Let's jump out to our status page and check some of the metrics here. You're able to glance at the sync duration total as well as the individual extract process and load times. So remember, we called this schema Accelerate SAP HANA One Lake Fabric Now. Why don't we jump out into One Lake and take a look at that SAP ERP data? All right, so just refresh the One Lake Explorer, and you can see that Accelerate SAP HANA One Lake Fabric schema in there. You see the MAKT, Mara, and Marv tables. And also, remember, I'll say this over and over, we write the source data from SAP or any source into One Lake. We write that as parquet files. You see the parquet files over there on the right. And then we use Delta Lake format to store those files into One Lake so that you've got an analytics ready data set. So I'm going to go ahead and load the uh, MAKT table into One Lake so that we can do some uh, quick uh, data previews and potentially even some queries if I want to later on. Uh, but that's a quick preview. You see the five transync plus the MAKT columns that are part of that. That's our uh, Salesforce account table that we had earlier. So all of this data, understandable, organized, ready to go. Let's add also the Mara table in so that we can do some querying on that. 
And Mara is now available. Uh, again, Parquet files stored as open source Delta Lake uh, format tables in one lake. Let's set up one more connector, uh, Marketing Analytics, Google Analytics 4, which is going to give you comprehensive analytics and a lot of features to measure engagement across your applications and your website all in one spot. Pretty simple to configure, as always, with Fivetran. We're going to keep that same uh, schema formatting here, Accelerate Google Analytics 4 to one lake. Really no difference there. This is going to look very similar to uh, the Salesforce configuration that we did earlier. I'm going to allow uh, Google to access my account. And you see a few more options here. I can pick my time frame. I'm going to leave it at 12 months, but I could go three months, six months, whatever it may be. I also want to sync all accounts here and uh, connect up to a pre-built report. In this case, I'm going to use a demographic age report. And Fivetran wants me to go ahead and name uh, a destination table here where that report is going to be persisted into one lake. So from there, save and test. Uh, we'll test connectivity, test all of the other API uh, capabilities that are required. I am able to connect. We won't rate Fivetran just yet. I'll let you do that. And uh, from here, let's uh, take a look at getting that initial sync going. Again, I could block or block columns, block tables, block schemas, as well as hash any PII data or PII columns uh, if I would like to. Across the top, logs, your schema. I can come back and change those if I'd like. Usage again after seven days. All historical syncs, by the way, are 100% free. And then you also get 14 days of incremental syncs for free too. So we want you to get a sense for uh, the consumption for each individual connector and, and what that value is that Fivetran is driving for you. Check out, uh, looks like we are complete. And you can see, again, some of the metrics there if you hover over that green bar. Let's go use the One Lake Explorer to browse that new Google Analytics 4 data. You see that schema populating in there into our Data Lake folder. I've got those various tables that uh, we moved over for that particular report. I've got conversion events, accounts. If you remember in one lake earlier, we had loaded in an account table from Salesforce, and then we'd also loaded a couple of SAP ERP tables, MAKT and Mara. Do the same thing with the Google Analytics for conversion events table. Uh, might want to do, I don't know, a Power BI report. We may want to combine that up with some other data sets later on. Uh, and you can see the data preview gives us a really nice view of those conversion events. Uh, a couple of 14 rows there, and just makes it really easy to work with. So just in the last uh, few minutes, we've created uh, three different, call them accelerator connectors here, Google Analytics 4, SAP HANA, and Salesforce, making it really easy to move virtually any type of data into one lake. Fivetran provides automated, reliable, self-serve, and secure data movement into one lake for any data workload or analytics use case. It's really the easy button for moving data into one lake, and you can give Fivetran a spin with our 14-day free trial. Get started today. Set up one lake as your destination. You've got access to over 400 source connectors to choose from. Thanks so much for joining me today to learn how Fivetran accelerates and automates data movement from Salesforce, SAP, ERP, and GA4 into one lake and Microsoft Fabric.